The Imo State National and State House of Assembly Election Petitions Tribunal has sacked Ikenga Ugochinyere from the House of Representatives. Ikenga was elected under the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and is the chairman of the House Committee on Petroleum Resources Upstream. In a unanimous decision, a three-member panel of the tribunal, which conducted its proceedings in Nasarawa State, held that Ugochinyere was not validly nominated by the PDP to contest the Idiato North-South Federal Constituency election, which was held on February 25. Consequently, the tribunal ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to within 90 days conduct a supplementary election in the constituency. The tribunal, in its lead judgment that was delivered by its chairman, Justice Anthony Apovi, specifically directed the electoral body to conduct the supplementary poll in 55 polling units where elections were not held on February 25. The court held that the PDP and its candidate should be excluded from the supplementary election. In a swift reaction, the federal lawmaker from Imo State, Ikenga Uguchinyere, vows to vigorously challenge the election judgment that nullified his victory at the polls in February at the Court of Appeal, saying he is determined to reclaim his mandate with everything he has. Joining us now on the morning show is Honorable Ikenga Ugochinyere, PDP, Idiato North South Federal Constituency. Good morning, Honorable Ugochinyere, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ruben, for having me this morning. Well, quickly, um, I just read that uh, you have decided to challenge uh, the decision of the tribunal in court. The tribunal is saying, well, you were not validly nominated, that uh, you know, the primaries uh, which uh, uh, produced you took place outside the constituency in violation of Section 29 of the uh, Electoral Act. So what's next? Are you already uh, preparing? Are your lawyers already preparing to go to the uh, uh, Court of Appeal? And what are your chances, really? Because that judgment seems to be so, you know, declaratory to the extent that the tribunal even said PDP and uh, your good self should be excluded uh, from the supplementary election. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, of course, we are headed to the appeal. And uh, so it's very important that, just like you said, it's very painful that the tribunal that uh, left Oweri on the ground of uh, insecurity and knowing very well the situation in Imo State during the primary that made the PDP right to INEC because of the uh, 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 state of emergency of uh, insecurity in Imo State, especially in either to where activities of uh, a non-government was very high to have the primary in the capital city of uh, Oweri. And this matter was challenged in court by the APC and the Labour Party. And the court, uh, the Federal High Court held that the reason for moving the primary to the capital city because of insecurity was legitimate and legal. And not only that also, <clears throat> the court made it very clear that going by the fourth alteration, as members of the APC and Labour Party, they don't have the locus to challenge the primary election of the People's Democratic Party. This matter went on appeal. Some of them went to Supreme Court. I won all of them and we went to election and we had a resounding victory in an election that I was not in the Imo state when it held. The people that went to this court came third and won only one polling unit out of 346 polling units. And it's also very painful that you will understand that just a few days ago, even before this judgment, there have been about 25 judgments on this issue of internal party issues and venue of primary and post-election issues. Of particular interest, if you permit me, is to remind you what the justices of the Court of Appeal said in the case of uh, Peter B. When they read the Supreme Court judgment in PDP versus Zynek, he said that the position of the law has always been that no political party can challenge the nomination of the candidate of another political party. The position did not change in Section 28514C of the Constitution. 
no matter how penned or disgruntled to the political party is with the way and manner another political party is conducting or has conducted its affairs concerning the nomination of candidate for any position. You must keep moon and remain an onlooker for it like the locals standing to challenge such nominations in court. It's on this ground that the court held that the challenge against Peter B's membership of the Labour Party was baseless and then struck it out. And it's important you need to remember the case of uh, APC versus uh, INEC in 2019 and AMPP versus NALA in 2008, where the court heard it clear that any issue of disqualification or nomination in eligibility that is outside the four walls of Section 66 of the Constitution is incoherent, is untenable, and is complete waste of the judicial time of the court. So that is why we are going to appeal court to challenge this judgment, which runs against the express provisions of the Constitution and other enabling laws and judicial precedent that have been delivered recently. All right. Thank you very much, Honorable Ugo Chinyere. So you presented your case, but that's meant to be before the appeal court, don't you think? Because um, talking about this, the, um, the tribunal has ruled, and the only option, if you were to overturn that ruling, would be for you to approach the appeal court, which is what you're going to do. What do you think you're, I mean, I don't even, we can't even talk about your chances, because that's again up to the justices. I'm not hearing you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, okay. So, so what, what would you want in terms of, uh, what's, your, what's your plea? What, what's the case, with, what, what's, what's your plea to the appeal court um, if you do, well, since you've decided to challenge the ruling of the tribunal? One is to, once is, uh, to involve in its entirety the judgment of Justice uh, Akboville-led uh, tribunal for having no legal basis. And you need to understand to restate that same principle that uh, this is a pre-election matter and this primary held because of the insecurity. And not only that, the person that is challenging this thing from APC came third in the election and, and shamefully won one pulling in it. One is important, I, I emphasize on this, one pulling in it out of 346. So it's a mandate that is so resounding. It's a mandate that is very popular. It's a mandate that is legal. So I'll be asking them to reverse this injustice, this manifest injustice, and reinstate the will of our people expressed at the general election that we won last slide. And you need to also know that the National Assembly uh, election petition tribunal court two that sat in the same Maraba some few days ago upheld the election of other members of the House of Rep from Imo State whose primary held in the same venue. So it was very shocking that he came to Kenga's own and then new principles that are not backed by any non-judicial precedents are being read that just to stop me. I have strong confidence and I want to repeat that. I have strong confidence in the judiciary and in the appeal court and I hope strongly that this injustice will be reversed by the justices of the appeal court. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask you this. Uh, some people have also cited other parts, you know, for uh, differences as regards your thought process. You know, they've cited other portions of the Constitution. But I'd like to ask you this. Do you think there's any political slants to all of this? Because you've been in the eye of the storm constantly, politically. It has, it, it's, it's all, this thing would have been a very easy and peaceful process if not because of the interference of Ozodema. How are you sure? Can you prove it? Process. You know, from... Can you prove it, Mr. Yes, Can you, you prove it? You have forgotten. You can, it, yes, you, you, you have forgotten that even on your station and TVC, after the attack, when he said that I'm not electable, I'm not popular, I cannot win an election, and he will beat me any day, any time, any that. But we went into that election to show him that he's not God. I was not in Imo State. I was not near the election. And we won 
all the polling units almost. His candidate had one out of 346. His own wife lost her polling unit. All his commissioner lost their polling unit. So all, he, all his utterances, all his actions, all his fabricated charges of murder, terrorism, uh, uh, action, okay. rape, and so on and so forth, which I keep, I keep on shouting about, we are all aimed at stopping me from participating in the election. The okay. boast that he has been making left, right, and center. But the good okay. thing about this is that after all those things, we still won a landslide victory, okay. and our people trusted us and gave us that mandate and, and we're confident can you, that this manifest injustice to me, will be reversed. Can you prove to me that Governor Uzo Dima has a hand in this judgment by the tribunal? That's what I ask you. Can you prove to me? Because you said, oh, it's because of Uzo Dima. When I asked their political and said it's because of Uzo So can you prove to me? Where is your proof that Governor Uzo Dima has a hand in this judgment of the tribunal? Where's your proof? Because of the great respect I have for members of the judiciary, there are certain things I cannot speak on air. But there are some things that you already, from the processes leading us to this particular moment, you already don't need to be told. Even some of the journalists that travel all the way to Maraba by the night to cover the event, you know the person that sent them because of what is possibly expecting to be the outcome. But there's some comments I will keep off air. But I don't need, you're not a baby. I don't need to tell you how we got to this particular point and all this offensive in the last two years, both to kill me, both to destroy me, both to destroy, uh, burn down my house, both to attack me on election day, before election day, and so on and so forth, all aim at achieving the purpose of Ikenga cannot be in the house of rape. But at the end of the day, I want him, even from outside the state, showing the superiority of God and the confidence our people have in us. So I don't need to go further on that because of the respect I have for the institution of the judiciary. But when the time comes, we'll talk about that. Well, good I mean, you've argued uh, your matter uh, so eloquently on television, but I guess you know, it's up to the courts to look at the uh, uh, details. And every matter, of course, will be treated on its own uh, uh, merit. But I see how election petitions have turned everybody into very eloquent uh, uh, lawyers, quoting presidents, quoting cases. <laughs> I wish you were the one of, in front of the court, you know, again, your, your matter yourself. But in any case, I guess there is very little we can say at this point. We just wait. Uh, you know, till you go to the uh, Court of Appeal and hope that your lawyers will do due diligence, okay? Well, uh, thank you so much. Thank I don't know if, so I mean, uh, we've talked about the matter and we look forward to how this will progress. And um, once that's been established, hopefully we can have you again on the show to discuss further. But I know before we let you go, Honorable Ugo Chinye, is there anything you'd like to say especially with regards to the entire process so far in terms of your elections, um, some of what the opposition has tabled before the courts, and also um, you know, um, what's going on in the House currently, um, your, your experience thus far. Well, it, the most important thing here is that I don't want people to be looking at this about, as a Ikenga. We are talking about challenges our institution is facing, both our electoral institution and our judicial institution. And for those people who are playing these things that is disturbing, to understand that one day you may be on the other side. The only way society can work is that there are strong institutions, not just the electoral institution, but the judicial institutions. Elections should only be determined by the will of the people. Anything outside that is illegitimate and unacceptable. And I must say that this has also opened you know, the need for further election electoral reform because each time we try to amend the electoral process, these politicians find a way to undermine it. You can see what is happening with the beavers accreditation. You can see what the court is saying that you must bring all the beavers machines to court. These things are worrisome. I think we must find a way to ensure that these institutions are strengthened and understand that the only way we can make progress is that these institutions are strong and independent and anybody can go before this institution and get justice because it pains me that somebody I was defeated. He had one pulling in it out of 346. Can be dragging us up and down because somebody doesn't like my face. This is not how to build democracy. This is not how to build uh, institutions. So I'm praying and hoping that Nigerians should understand that this is a matter of national survival and come around to find a way to put this nation on the path of sustainable growth. Right. Uh, thank, you. I th thank you so much, uh, Honorable Ugo Chinyere. I think we've pretty much uh, exhausted most of it. So we'll see how your time goes in court. And if there are further things to talk about, we'll talk about them. <laughs>